it's freaking 60 degrees outside, cold as hell. Investigate this place tonight. Syracuse, New York, the economic and educational hub of central New York. The city has functioned as a major crossroads over the last two centuries with the advent of the Erie Canal and then the railway network. Many slaves fled to this city as it became an active center for the abolitionist movement, known as the Great Central Depot on the Underground Railroad. State conventions were held in the city with guest speakers such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony in support for the Underground Railroad. We are here to look into the possibility of souls that may still be residing within the Barnes Hiscock Mansion. Today, the site for the George Rebecca Barnes Foundation, this mansion was owned by George Barnes and later Frank Hiscock. The site was key to the abolitionist movement during the mid-1850s. What's your name and what do you do here? Arlene Stewart. And I actually founded the George and Rebecca Barnes Foundation. Okay. Um, but now I'm, I'm off the board and whatnot, and I'm just a member that believes firmly in having this house saved so that we can uh, have the next generation know the history of it and just okay. understand the importance of a home that was built in 1853 okay. uh, and is still here today. <laughs> nice. All right, we'll take a tour of the house. We don't have any proof that we ever actually had any freedom seekers uh, staying in the house. Okay. Is it possible that one came in and George said, oh, we can't find a space for you tonight, and so they found him a, a spot in the house, but it wasn't like some others where they were hidden in the basement uh, for days okay. on end? That did not take place. No. What took place in this house was a pre-meeting I have lots of newspaper clippings that show that, um, for instance, in 1854, uh, there was a meeting that was called downtown in one of the convention halls. Okay. All right, the, the planning of that meeting took place in this room. Oh, okay. Oh. And this again, this is when you guys are here later today, mm -hmm. this is where um, Pat Barbino mm -hmm. saw, very, very clearly saw something. Okay, so someone walking up here? Do you yes. know what, a, what they reported saying? Yes, she said she looked, she thought she saw a shadow and she looked up and, and she saw a man coming up the steps, yeah, right? But she didn't pick him up until he was right here almost by where the um, plant is. Okay. Could the spirits still be walking these stairs as they were so used to doing during their time? We continued our tour of the mansion and were brought to a room that a very significant person used to find rest. Now, it's normally called the Blue Room, but I've started to be actually calling it William uh, Howard Taft Room because this is the room he slept in every time he came to Syracuse. Oh, Howard Taft? He, he, after he was president, okay. um, he and Judge Hiscock were very dear friends, well, actually through his presidency, too. Um, but uh, William Howard Taft was our Chief Justice of our Supreme Court, okay. national. Judge Hiscock was our Chief Justice of the New York State Court of Appeals, which is the highest court in the New York mm -hmm. State. So they were very, very close. They dealt with each other over many issues, and they were very like-minded. And so whenever he got off the train mm -hmm. in Syracuse, uh, Judge Hiscock would be there with his buggy. Never drove a car in his entire life. Nice. He would ride in one, but he wouldn't drive one. So he would get his horse and buggy, and he would go over to the station and pick up uh, uh, William Howard Taft, and this is where he'd stay, right in this room. Has anyone ever um, thought they might have heard him or seen him in this room? Uh, no. To my <laughs> knowledge, no. Uh, the, the, if I was to put a, a sense, yeah. um, it, you know, they had, between the two families, they had about 16 servants okay. that were in the house over yep. the years. And when Bessie died, even mm -hmm. in her will, she left monies and things because of the wonderful uh, services that, that she and her family uh, had enjoyed okay. by these people's help. And, and, you know, inside me says it could be one of these people that yeah. wants to still make sure this house the is house being is, taken care yeah, of. Yeah, one of the servants. Uh, you know. William Howard Taft, our country's 27th president, was a frequent guest of Frank Hiscock. Could his presence still be here relaxing in the home of his friend, or is there someone else here? Any reports in the kitchen? Any sort of activity or anything? 
I do not know this, but Karen tells me that some one of the chefs over the years yeah. has actually seen some knives come out of their holders and whatnot. Wow. Uh, that and things that have been um, left other places okay. than where they were moved when they around. yeah okay. they'd go out to serve something and they'd come back in and something would be totally moved around. Okay. So, just for the record, you are? I'm Karen Howe. I am the president of the board of the George and Rebecca Barnes Foundation. And the foundation owns this uh, house, the Barnes Hiscock Mansion. And, and it's their duty to bring it back to the original or to keep it and maintain it? Well, our, our mission is to uh, restore, maintain, and, and uh, preserve this house. We can't take it way back to 1853 when it was originally built, but we can restore it to 1898. Um, the, when uh, Rebecca passed away, the house went to uh, her daughter, Mary Elizabeth, and they undertook a three-year uh, renovation where they added the third floor, um, did some you know, more decorations on the interior, but this footprint stayed the same. And then they added to the back. Um, so, um, so we would want to restore the house to that uh, thing. That and, yes. Was there any activity in this area that we're now in? Uh, if we're talking paranormal, paranormal. or the sightings, yeah. uh, I was told there was a, a woman that was the manager of the Corinthian Club. The Syracuse Corinthian Club owned this house for 60 years. Um, and the manager said that she was standing in the back hallway talking to someone and looked over her shoulder and saw someone standing in this, a, a gentleman walking by. And it uh, totally freaked Seems her out. Seems like that gentleman gets around in that yeah. house, huh? And um, anything in either of these rooms? Not that I'm aware of. No uh, sightings actually in the rooms. Well, the man's got to come from somewhere, right? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank Karen. you, Tracy. It was nice meeting you, nice and meeting hopefully you. we'll have some stuff to give you. I would be very pleased to hear that. All right, so, thank, you. thank you. So, what is this room? This room is nice. This room was it's beautiful. the original dining room for uh, George and Rebecca Barnes. Okay. And then they had it uh, redone in uh, the dark wood and all of the artwork uh, in 1884. Okay. And again, another fireplace, but a different style again. Okay. Um, the uh, artwork that's on the wall, the paintings, were done by Tommaso Jagaris. He worked for Donald McDonald. Donald who did all the stained glass. Okay, yeah. And he worked for Lyman Silsby, who did a fair amount of architectural work. He did the cemetery up at uh, Oakwood, and he loves his arches, so you can almost see his work in the room here. He did a lot of work with arches. But he was the son-in-law of Charles Sedgwick. So um, he had already been in Syracuse at that point, and George Barnes uh, asked him to design this room. The only thing that's changed in this room since 1884 is the chandelier and the bar was put bar. in in 1949. But everything else is as it was. This was 1949? This was 1949, this so bar was put in. I thought it was like much yeah. newer. And we lost our big table that matched yes. the, the lion heads and whatnot, but, um, but it, was, it was just, I have photos of it, it was just as magnificent as what you look on the fireplace, I the like carvings on it. I want to take my shoes off while <laughs> through here because yeah. And this is the original terrazzo floor. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. We traveled to downtown Syracuse and were able to locate the only known photograph of George and Rebecca Barnes' wedding officiated by Reverend Samuel Joseph May. Reverend May was a radical American reformer during the 19th century and championed multiple reform movements, abolitionism being one of them. While we were in downtown Syracuse, we wanted to learn more about the Underground Railroad. So we went to a local restaurant, which used to be a church, called the Mission Restaurant. We were told there was an actual section dug out and used by slaves as part of the Underground Railroad. We also heard of three faces carved in the dirt and excavated when this section was found. We were able to see the faces, but unfortunately were not allowed to video or photograph them. Okay, so this is what would have been the entrance to the, uh, the portion of the Underground Railroad right back here. in the day. Yeah, and you can still see kind of by the mark on the wall right here. Mm -hmm. um, this is where the dirt actually, you know, started at that ledge and kind of came up to about okay. this high. And so up to the, the, uh, the floor joists. It came gradually back up. Well, yeah, it came up to here and then was excavated out. And they dug this tunnel in sort of a dogleg fashion, you know, in such a way deliberately so that 
people hanging out in the back, uh, the voices or candlelight wouldn't carry directly, you know, in a oh, straight yeah. line right. to door, so shoot somebody stumble Dumb upon down. it or right. something. You know? And this so, is all like part so, of the original then. Too, well, this right? all actually this all had to be excavated for the purposes of the restaurant. All this all this block oh, that you really? see, you know, was added. Yeah, um, this room was taken out so we could put in a walk-in cooler and such. Jeez. But yeah, this was all dirt except for the pathway that leads back wow. back through here. So I'm gonna scoot past you. And you have to watch your step as you come through here. Okay. <clears throat> Be careful, Nicholas. So this this is how it was originally. Wow. This, from this point on. Um, you should I let you out? Yeah, I'm gonna let you know. I'll step out and let you guys. It's not very pretty. There's just you know there's stuff that yep. was tossed back in here from you know prior restaurant and whatnot. Right. Um, I'll just since you're standing right here, I'll just show you right right here in this corner where this mm -hmm. where this little sort of dirt slide is. Right. That's where the faces were taken out of. Right on the ground level. Um, well, right right there like, like on this on this side wall. Oh, that's what I was gonna tell you about before. Um, the uh, yeah the faces have been here for a long time, but according to this you know the documentation that I have. The paperwork. There's really no clear answer as to who did them. They, right. There's a lot of suspicion that they were done by a, a janitor who worked here um, around the turn of the century. It's kind of a, a, like a Halloween prank or something. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and I'm sure since you've seen the faces, you can tell they don't necessarily look particularly African American. Not. Um, so who they knows? Look a little scary. So they're a little, yeah. Yeah. You know, as masks go, they're kind of cool, but yeah. there's really no way to, to, to you know verify whatever yeah, who they did were, them. No way to date it unless they spend a lot of money on like carbon dating. Exactly. Like um, and, it, and when you do, if you do go back in here on the right hand side, you actually see, well on both sides, the left and the right, there's still some plaster of Paris that they that they took as molds, but for whatever reason decided not to remove okay. on there. And the, on the right hand side, there's what you might call a bench. There's a, a place that's, you know, they either sat or maybe slept Wait, on. Um, yeah, just a little ledge that was kind of carved oh, out. Oh, okay. um, so that's kind of cool. So you don't mind as Roman, huh? No, no, no. You got your flashlight app, Tracy, so it gives you? Yeah, I don't know. You got it. I'm recording audio right now. You're recording audio? I don't know where it is. The owner of the restaurant, whose identity we have hidden, has allowed us to enter into this section of the restaurant so that we could experience for ourselves the cramped quarters and conditions slaves had to endure while hiding from slave owners from the south who wanted to lay claim to their slaves. The experience was mind-blowing. It was pitch black even in mid-afternoon. There was no windows or light of any kind. A bench marked the only spot where one could sit, and trust me, it was not comfortable at all. After our experience downtown, we waited for nightfall to approach. We knew this was an amazing opportunity to investigate a place like this. We set up our equipment in all sections of the house and got our gear ready for the evening. Digital voice recorders, video cameras, night shot and regular digital cameras, EMF detectors, the laser grid from ShannonSylvia.com, the EVP field processor made by Larry O'Dean and available from EVPFieldProcessor.com, our DVR system, and laptop. Finally, we can relax before the investigation starts. All right, we're at the Barnes Mansion in Syracuse, New York. It is approximately 
8.30, and we're getting ready for lights out and our investigation to begin. 9.30, sorry. 9.30, sorry. And um, right here, Nick, is what the grand, the front staircase, and it was reported that a man, full apparition man, was seen turning the corner and going upstairs. Down here is the basement corridor, and there's been many reports of... Uh, apparitions walking up and down a woman and a man back here is the back kitchen um, there was a report of a knife being uh, knocked off the counter at the table right there and uh, well somebody was working back there and nobody else was there so we set up a knife and a sharpener to, to see if we can uh, replicate that by you know debunking it and if maybe we can get somebody to move it and this is the front hallway, the main hallway from the front door. Um, there's been an apparition seen walking back and forth there. And the, the side rooms on the side of that hallway have re digital voice recorders. So if there's any activity, we got a whole good shot there. And we're all set. You're ready to go. Little did we know that soon after announcing our angles for our DVR, and during our last second check before we started, that we would be in for a little surprise. All right, this is obviously a static night vision camera pointing at a K2 meter that's lightly blinking right now. We're in the front dining room. And it's sitting at the edge of a dining room table. Uh, he does have his phone on, so it's probably it's that. On it's on airplane mode? Yeah. Never mind. Probably it's, it's not. has been doing that for a while. So we'll monitor this and see if there's any change other than this light green. See how bright it is? Yeah, but what I want to know is why is this thing moving? What thing? This recorder is jumping everywhere. Come here, look at the screen. It's moving. And when I said that, it's going up to orange. Yeah. Yeah, but look, this recorder, the yeah, screen is actually like on? bouncing back and forth. Let me see. And I don't know if it's a floorboard or what. It's on stone, though. You at the end of the table? You sitting down there? Is that doing anything, Tracy? No. <gasps> Did that. Do that again. Put that, stand that up and uh, and come back here. Wait, wait, not there yet. Let him stand it up. Over here. Can you knock that down again for us? Wave it up. Mike, you do it yet. What? Maybe he did. Are you serious? sitting at the end of the table with us? Mike is jumping up and down very damn hard right now. And it didn't it fall. Stop moving. Dude, that's crazy. We'll get right beside it. Go stand up. This K2 meter was standing as it was for well over 30 minutes. And as you can see, nothing we did could cause it to fall again. It stayed upright, not falling after this or for the rest of the eight hours here. Paranormal or not? You be the judge. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, uh, what's called the EFP um, processor. And what it is is it's a device that will allow you to not only hear, um, clear any EVPs that you could potentially get, but it'll also display on a light bar um, if you actually have an EVP or not. What it does is during the questions, after you ask your question, when you are silent, if you see movement on your screen or on the light bar, that means something else had manipulated the energy around it. And since I'm monitoring it live, I should have heard something at the same time. Now, you know, this is something that is um, built and created by the folks at um, based in California. And you can. Um, Pick these up at efpfieldprocessor.com. Again, efpfieldprocessor.com. Very cheap. It's an amazing piece of equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the baseline for this. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn it on, start recording, and then I'll be silent. And then I'm going to get it so that the red bar, the red um, bar line is... Um, met. So I turn it on 
And now I'm going to rec start recording. Okay, that is about our baseline. So, what should happen is I'm going to ask some questions. In between the questions, if there's any responses, just as you see when I'm talking, the green lights are all the way to the top. They can go up or they can sink down well below that baseline. In between questions, during the dead silence, you'll see the red light blinking in the middle. That's our base. Okay, just gonna relax. Get ourselves going. Brian, if you happen to see anything, I can't see the bar right now. Yeah. If you see anything during the downtime, let me know. We are in an amazing room. I'm looking at a picture of a lady in between two candles. I've got a piano behind me. Brian and Nick are in here. And there's a really big fireplace, too, that we have another digital voice recorder recording on. Can someone come in from the patio? The door is right there. Come on in. Join us. That's the um, key, the heater. Steam heater. We saw some faces carved in this tunnel that's underneath the mission. It used to be a church. Now it's a restaurant. whistling noise again is the steam heat. I can't hear it with my ears. No? No. Nope. There's a piano behind me. Can you start playing that piano? Hit a key. Hit a string. Please. I would love to see you. Hear you. Feel you. We just want to know what happens to us as time goes on. I think that was stomach noise. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 2011 in our time. 2011. Stomach noise. What year is it for you? Do you know that you have passed? I heard that. I heard something too. I heard we that. Stop that and No stop it. And I'm gonna play it back here. And it sounded like a female to me. It sounded female, yes. And the only other female that would have hit that high at pitch, because Dawn Dawn's got kind of a lower voice. Yeah. The yeah. type of pitch that I have here is something like maybe Nicole's freak uh, pitch. She's but she's two floors in the, up. she's two floors up in the attic. And there's no way that we can hear that. No. Do you know that you have passed? I heard that. Oh, you know I heard something too. I heard that. Stop that. No, stop it. And I'm gonna it, it, I know it it makes it a, a little bit more Does that mean means you go away? This light right here. Like Mally Fox. Blinking in between the signs. She's a ghost repellent, she says. Yeah, she says she's a ghost repellent. Do you know that you have passed? I heard that. It's I heard something it's fake. Too. Like, oh, I heard that. that. No, stop it. I'm gonna play it back here. Do you know that you have passed? I heard that. Do you know that you have passed? I heard that. Like I said, my name is Tracy. My name is Dawn. 
We didn't come here to bother you or to punish you. We came just to communicate. The people here, Karen and Arlene, gave us a tour of this beautiful home earlier. And they just want to know who's here. So if there's somebody here with us, can you give us your name? Tell us your name. Was that you who tugged on Don's hood? I don't know. I think it might have been a male just answering like a female. You know, I don't really have anything. You just tell me if I'm gonna hit something here. Doing a zap. Want to show them what, what we're seeing? It's right up here. There. That's what we're seeing. That's what I'm going by. This is what Don's got. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is there an opening somewhere around here, Don? <laughs> I see a big pipe above your head coming up. All right. Yeah, there's an opening. About to hit it. Oh, this is. That's a window. Yeah. This is where we go. That's a ladder. You're kicking. Hi. My name's Tracy. This is Don. We want to see if you want to talk to us. What's your name? Are you male? Are you female? Are you a little boy or a little girl? This green light in my hand will give us a way to see answers of yes and no. Yes, make the lights light up. And no, makes the lights stay the way, the way they are. And the red device, the red device, whoops, that's a pipe, right? Mm -hmm. The red device, the red light in my other hand is a recorder. So we need to find the entrance down to that room. That's a wall. That's a wall. Keep going, you got wall, wall, wall. This is where we start getting headaches and we heard that really whack old noise over there. Yeah, I had the, the camera facing down that way when we heard that. You did? Yeah. So are we okay? What do I got in front of me? You got an opening. Yeah, but anything? You got uh, a bunch of, looks like uh, soda, you know those... Soda cakes? Yeah. Can the, I go straight? Uh, yep. The soda cakes are to your right. Okay. There's a table, looks like a table to your left. Right. Alright, oh, here we go. Here we go. I knew we would find you somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna move this so you have a seat done. So you can turn, it's a little dirty, but... Right. So you can film. <laughs> oh. 
All right. We're gonna sit here, be quiet for a few minutes. See what we can hear. Your light's on in your pocket. Okay, so I have it synced. We are using the EFP device down in the basement made by and we are also using um, we are using Shan, uh, Shannon Sylvia's lasers and the lasers as you can tell I have them sitting down right next to me um, and they are pointing out down this hallway in the basement just lighting everything up and what that laser can do is if someone or something walks in front of it like a shadow then that shadow will block it out if there's like a mist it'll distort it to make it more three-dimensional so we'll have this laser on and see if uh, we can capture anything moving within these uh, within this grid so we also to our right here have a K2 meter that we will use you know as kind of like a backup to anything else that we may catch so we are in the basement is there anyone here with us right now Now there are burners going on down here and there is an ice machine so those noises we could probably pick up but I want to know if there is a person down here. There were two people down here and someone got their um, their sweatshirt tugged. Someone was touched. We heard they heard voices, they heard things going on. Talk to us. Is there anyone here with us right now? Can you feel free to show yourself to us? Can you talk to us? You know, if you say something, I'll be able to hear you. Is that above us? I believe so. Okay. It sounded like footsteps walking, but... Oh, I believe it was above us. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. <coughs> I hear my dad. Yeah. And it showed up on this. The furnace is off. I don't know. Maybe we should have. The furnace is off. So. Yeah, we're going to end this. I didn't hear anything here. It's more contamination than anything. So we're going to head to the furnace area in the basement. This is Mike and Nick. Okay. Is there two of you here? If so, please turn on that light. Okay, I was just about to say something, I completely forgot what I was going to say, <coughs> can you please, if there's two of you, you, uh, you turned it on, but can you turn it off please, because uh, let's just ask more questions, because this is kind of sporadic, so could you please turn that light off? Turn the light off, please. The camera's going way out of focus. Your camera is? Yeah. Okay, just walk away from it then. Wow, the furnace finally goes off. 
And something comes back on. Thank you. Just went back in focus. Okay. Hold on. Let's, let's be quiet for just a second here so I can recalibrate this. I like how the lights stayed off, though. Yeah, huh? Okay. This is very hard to calibrate and use in a blower furnace type scenario. Okay, um, I like how the flashlight stayed off, so it's kind of giving. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, turn it back off, please. I want to ask a question, and then I want you to turn it on if the answer is yes. So, can you please turn that off? Just shut it right off like you were. Okay. Shut it off and then I'll ask a question. Okay. Now I'm gonna ask you a question. If the answer is yes, please turn on the flashlight. Okay? All right, let's begin. Are you male? If so, please turn on the flashlight. Are you female? If so, please turn on the flashlight. Are we getting responses from someone on the other side? While it is hard to determine, the light coming on and shutting off in response to our questions is something we cannot overlook. Is there more than one of you? So male and female. If so, please turn on the flashlight. I saw the blip there. So are you male and female? Yes. Okay. Okay, so... Can you please turn off the flashlight? I got some more questions for you to answer. Please turn off the flashlight. We want to try a few things. So let's, let's start over. Let's move away from this, turn off the light, and move away from the little green light at the bottom of the steps. Thank you. Okay. So right now... Footsteps. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, right now, the light's off, and there's one green light. So let's do this. We think that there's a male and a female here. If this is the case... I got that to go up to two, okay. Now can you turn on the light? Walk up to the light and turn the light on if there's a male and a female here. That went on with that one on. Okay. You did it. That's weird. Now did that light also? That lit, yes, but when I heard that noise came on, yeah. that went up. It went to three. Really? At the same time as that went on, and then that turned on. But that's weird because, okay, yeah, please move away. Let's do this again. Okay, okay, it didn't do it that time then. Oh, so know. when that did that last time, that went up to three, and then the light came on. It didn't do it. This just went up that. to three. It just now did? No, I'm asking you. That oh, one. yeah, 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 when that noise came on, yes. When that yeah, yeah, came on. Yeah, yeah. That went to three, and then that light turned on, but it was at the exact same time. But when it came on, then... Just now, light didn't come on to three. Turn the light off for just a moment. Just a moment. Can you please ask him to call Tracy? Uh, front dining area, right hand side, where Gang 2 has been going off. Are you going to sit on that side facing this way? Yeah. I'm going to sit right here. He talks to me. So, we've been talking to you most of the night here. My name is Tracy, and that's my daughter, Nicole. You liked her, you were talking to her. Um, on the table behind me is a device with a red light that will record your voice so we can hear, hear what you say. Um, hopefully it will be loud enough that we can hear you when you answer by 
flashing the lights. And right next to it is another meter with a green light similar to the one that's over there. And uh, I can pick it up, make it stand up just like that one. Are you there with us? You are? You like my daughter, don't you? Are you a Barnes? Or are you a Hiscott? Oh. So you, you were part of the Hiscott family? All right, so you must. Yes, I did. All right, so you must. All right, so you must. Tracy and I decided it was time to head to the guest room of the president. And the kitchen is. All right, I'm going to follow my son up the stairs. Where's Tash? Is Tash room right here? No, no, the the one over here. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mike and Dawn, we're going to be right above you guys, so kind of we're going to keep down for you, just kind of keep it down a little bit. Unless you scream. EVP session, Nicholas, Tracy. I'm going to set up the K2. I don't care. I know how you feel. No, no, it's fine. I've been using it. I mean, yeah. as long as we get other things in conjunction with it, you yeah. know. This is the furniture that was here. Possibly. Wow, I don't know if I guess get a light on the only or an orb. <laughs> when I sat, when I laid down on the bed here. Just fly up? No, over there by the chandelier. This orb just went, or light thing, went straight up. I'm gonna get the, the uh, base readings. Okay. So, you guys can do some sign. Let me call. <coughs> Tracy and Nick in um, Taft's bedroom. Okay, we are in the room that President William Taft stayed in every single time he came to Syracuse. And we would be amazed to know if he was still around. Is the president here with us? Is there anyone here with us in this room? That was my stomach. My son's holding a device with a red light on it. I know there's someone here because they've been interacting with us downstairs. Are you a male or female? What is your name? I think Taft was one of the suckiest presidents there was. He didn't do anything. Is there anybody in here? What year is it? Nothing. I'm not 
little sensitive that way. I know. Breathe. I mean, just go, or like, up and smack your lips or something. Wow. So that shows that, I mean, complete silence is, almost, is needed, which is good, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm not hearing anything, feeling anything. I'm not either. It's a dead room. I mean, let me ask something here. Mm -hmm. This dresser, does this dresser hold any significance to you at all, whoever may be in this room? We did not experience anything in this room or the entire floor. With nothing else occurring during the evening, we all decided to go to the main ballroom on the third floor. Did you follow us upstairs to the ballroom? Okay. We're getting K2 hits too over here. Want to grab the camera behind you? Is that you making the lights change on the device in front of me? Yeah, I thought I heard like a. Oh. Yeah, yeah, in the distance at a moment. It is really faint. But what we didn't realize was at that moment on the first floor in the kitchen, we picked up a Class A EVP, which stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. Spirits are said to be able to use the low frequency of the recorder's microphone to be able to communicate with us. We think you can clearly make this one out. We did capture an interesting image in the front dining room when we were doing an EVP session. This picture shows what appears to be a light anomaly in front of Tracy. The picture taken before this one shows a build up to the appearance in front of him. No one saw this light and what is interesting is it does not seem to be coming from any other light source nearby. It seems to emanate on its own. As you can see in this picture. The lights are clearly a result of the shutter speed of the camera and my slight movement as I hold the EFP device. This next photo shows the slight movement of the person taking the picture of an exit sign. While this makes for a really cool effect, this is purely natural. So what is this object in front of Tracy during the EVP session? While we did not have any mind-blowing data to suggest without a shadow of a doubt a true haunting, we definitely did encounter some very strange occurrences and we did hear from a few voices of those who still may remain roaming the great rooms within the Barnes-Hiscock Mansion in Syracuse, New York.